Good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Irene Jalim. Um, I will be uh, speaking today regarding the uh, regulatory requirements for um, exporting drugs to Indonesia. First, I would like to um, just share uh, an overview of our firm. Uh, we are a Southeast Asia regional law firm. We are spread across um, six countries and we have seven offices with our headquarter in um, Bangkok, Thailand. Tiliki and Gibbons is the premier law firm for doing business in Southeast Asia. We offer full service legal solutions for the top investors and high growth companies that drive the region's economic growth. We have over 230 lawyers and consultants practicing in Cambodia, Indonesia, Laos, Myanmar, Thailand, and Vietnam. Our practice areas include banking and finance, capital markets, competition and trade, compliance and investigations, corporate merger and acquisition, dispute resolution and litigation, employment, intellectual property, real estate, regulatory affairs, and tax. We offer a full service um, of a law firm in all of our offices except for Indonesia. Currently, our Indonesia office is um, providing service for intellectual property and regulatory affairs. And these are the industries that we have uh, been assisting in the automotive, aviation, consumer products, energy, fintech, insurance, life sciences, and technology. We are a member of two global associations of elite independent um, law firms, uh, Lex Mundi and Multi Law. And just recently we joined um, Drew Network Asia. Our global reach to over 21,000 lawyers helps us serve clients in more than 180 jurisdictions. Now we'll move on to the um, outline of this presentation. Uh, the first one is Indonesia pharmaceutical market outlook. The second one, we'll talk about the regulatory framework and competent authority. Uh, and then we'll go over the drug registration requirements. On the Indonesia pharmaceutical market outlook, uh, the revenue in the pharmaceuticals market is projected to reach uh, about 3.6 uh, billion US dollars in 2023 and will continue to rise until 2028 up to a projected revenue of 4.5 billion dollars. The market's uh, largest market is oncology drugs with a projected market volume of uh, half a mil half a billion US dollars in 2023. Uh, revenue is expected to show an annual growth rate of 4.69%, um, resulting in a market volume of $4.5 by 2028. The regulatory frameworks for drugs registration. Uh, drug registration in Indonesia is governed under the National Agency of Drug and Food Control, or also known as BPOM. Uh, the list of relevant regulations, and this, this is a non-exhaustive list. Um, BPOM regulation number 24 of 2017 on the criteria and procedure of drugs registration and all of the subsequent um, amendments of the regulation. And also BPOM regulation number 34 of 2018 on guidelines for uh, drugs GMP. Now we'll go over to the criteria, procedure, and requirements for drug registration in Indonesia. First, we'll go over some of the definitions. Uh, a drug is a finished product, including biological product, which is a substance or a combination of substances used to affect or investigate the physiological system or state of pathology in order to establish diagnosis, prevention, treatment, recovery, and improvement of health and contraceptions for humans. Drug registration is the procedure for registration and evaluation of drugs to obtain approval. Imported drug is a drug made by the pharmaceutical industry abroad in the form of a finished product or a bulk product, 
and primary packaging to be distributed in Indonesia. Applicant is a pharmaceutical industry that has obtained license in pharmaceutical industry in accordance with the provisions of the legislation. The criteria for a drug registration is that drugs to be distributed in Indonesia must have a marketing authorization. And to have that marketing authorization, a drug must meet the following criteria, reassuring efficacy and adequate safety, uh, proven through non-clinical and, non and clinical trials or other evidence in accordance with the status of scientific development, qualified uh, quality in accordance with the established standards, including the manufacturing process in accordance with GMP and equipped with valid evidence, and product information and label containing complete objective and non-misleading information that can guarantee the proper rationale and safe use of the drug. For drug names, uh, there's generic names in accordance with the International Non-Proprietary Names Modified and trade names given by the applicant as the identity of the drug. In the... Uh, Regulation for drug registration, it is stated that if in the future there is another uh, party who is more entitled to the name of the drug listed in the marketing authorization in accordance with the provisions of the legislation, the applicant must change the name of the drug. Uh, registered drugs can be local and imported. Uh, this is the general guidelines for drug names. This is also listed in the regulation that drug names must comply with the following provisions. They must be objective and not misleading. The same trade name can only be used by one pharmaceutical industry of marketing authorization holder for drugs with the same active pharmaceutical ingredients, indications, and category. Trade names may not use the whole or part of generic names of the active pharmaceutical ingredients that is not contained. Trade names must not be the same or very similar in sound or writing with trade name of a drug that has been registered with a different active pharmaceutical ingredients. Trade names of drug category over the counter containing at least one of the same active pharmaceutical ingredients and or the same therapeutic class may use the same trade name as the umbrella brand. Trade names may not use the same or similar name to a drug which, which the marketing authorization has been revoked due to safety issues, misuse, and other violations. And um, the registration pathway for a drug registration. Um, this is uh, the pathways according to the regulation and it has been amended uh, in BPOM regulation um, number 15 of, of 2019. Um, as the seven days pathway uh, covering registration for export drug only, 10 days pathway covering renewal, 40 days uh, for minor variation registration, 50 days pathway covering the first registration of investigational new drugs by the pharmaceutical industry investing in Indonesia, 75 days pathway covering the first registration of the first generic drugs by the pharmaceutical industry investing in Indonesia and variation reg registration of new drugs and biological products related to quality that have been approved in at least one country with an established evaluation system. So D and E are indicated in bold. These are the uh, new provisions under the amendment of the BPOM regulation number 15 of 2019. And then uh, the 100 uh, days pathway covering new registration of new drugs and um, so forth, which um, I will not uh, read it out all one by one. But again, the um, the one that is um, indicated in bold font that is also amended in the um, BPOM regulation number 15 of 2019, which is the first registration of new drugs and biological products by the pharmaceutical industry investing in Indonesia. And then there's the 120 days pathway for new registration of new drugs and major variations with new indications or pathology that have been approved in the last three, in at least uh, three countries with an established evaluation system. 150 days pathway for new registration of generic drugs and branded generic drugs that are not included in the evaluation path 
as referred to in point F, and the 300 days pathway covering new registration of new drugs and biological products, as well as major variations registration with new indications or pathology that are not included in the evaluation path as referred to in point D and E. For registration category, new registration, there's category one, two, and three, and each category is uh, then uh, divided again into subcategories depending on the type of products, uh, the type of the drug product. And then there's a variation registration for category four, five, and six, major, minor, and notification variation. And for renewal registration, it's category seven. The overall procedure for drug registration, it's conducted um, online through um, eBPOM, uh, portal. Uh, first, you go through a pre-registration and then obtain the pre-registration results or HPR, which is published maximum 40 working days from the receipt of the application, valid for one year. And then you go into the registration and evaluation and then issuance of marketing authorization, which is valid for five years. The application for Drug pre-registration is made for registration screening, including determining the registration category, evaluation path, evaluation fee, and registration documents. The requirements for pre-registration, um, this also has been amended in BPOM regulation number 15 of 2019. It consists of administration, administration documents, quality documents, non-clinical and clinical if deemed necessary. And um, I have mentioned this uh, in the previous uh, procedure for drug registration that the pre-registration results um, are published um, within 40 days and it's, it's valid for one year from the date of issuance. The requirements for pre-registration, the first one is the administrative documents. Um, and there are uh, certain documents for determining the 100 days uh, pathway, justification that the drug is indicated for serious and rare disease or orphan drug, and or justification that the drug is indicated for a treatment of serious diseases that threaten human life, uh, life saving and or easily transmitted to others, and or there is no or lack of other treatment options that are safe and effective, and or supporting documents for public health programs. And then there's documents for determining the 120 days pathway. Um, these are all the um, uh, listed um, required documents. And um, as I mentioned earlier, this has been amended in BPOM regulation number 15 of 2019. It's to add the uh, criteria for selecting a reference country for the full assessment um, report or AR document, it's um, so registration conditions with reference countries and then the criteria for selecting a reference country. The country that will be a reference is a country with a well-known evaluation system and has published AR in English. And it has become a reference country by many other countries. And in the amendment uh, regulation, BPOM stated that based on the above criteria, the reference countries are uh, European Union, US, Australia, Canada, United Kingdom, and Japan. Next, the documents for determining the 300 days pathway. So for new registration of new drugs, biological products, or registration of major variations with new indications or new pathology that are not included in the 100 days and 120 days pathway, an evaluation will be carried out through the 300 days pathway. And um, documents related to patents, if deemed necessary, um, patent related declaration letter, the results of patent searches from the D Director General of Intellectual Property, results of patent self assessment. And these are the quality documents um, uh, for a pre registration. Quality overall summary, information on animal derived ingredients used in the manufacturing process of active pharmaceutical ingredients and drugs, DMF or equivalent document from the manufacturer of active pharmaceutical ingredients for 
um, active pharmaceutical ingredients if necessary, equivalence data, summary or protocol or justification if it is not required for an equivalence test, and the non-clinical and clinical documents in the pre-registration if deemed necessary. Now we go over the registration requirements. So the drug registration is carried out by applicants by submitting registration documents. Uh, registration of imported drugs can only be submitted by applicants that have obtained written approval from the pharmaceutical industry overseas, and it must include the validity period of the partnership. The pharmaceutical industry abroad must have a license in pharmaceutical industry and meet the GMP requirements. Imported drugs are in the form of bulk or finished products. Imported drug registration is prioritized for drugs for national health pro program, investigational new drugs, and or drugs that are needed but cannot be manufactured locally. The required documents consist of administrative documents, product information, which is a summary of product characteristics or brochure and patient information leaflet, label and photo of a product, quality documents, non-clinical documents, and clinical documents. The administrative documents and product information, uh, just the ones that are specifically um, required for imported drugs in point four. So the first one is a pharmaceutical industry license of manufacturers and applicants, appointment letters from the pharmaceutical industry uh, or overseas product owners, certificate of pharmaceutical product, a valid GMP certificate from the manufacturer for the registered dose, dosage form or other equivalent documents, latest GMP inspection data, GMP certificate of pharmaceutical ingredients manufacturer, import justification and proof of balance and of export and import activities if necessary. And you also have to provide the pre-registration results, um, proof of payment and other documents if necessary. For the minimum information for product information, uh, this is the one for summary of product characteristics or brochure. Uh, it's a extensive list of information, very detailed, including dosage form, uh, indications, route of administration, warnings, precautions, and so forth. And then product information for patients. It includes um, product name, dosage form, product description, and composition of active pharmaceutical ingredients or what is contained in the drug, and product strength, indication, or what is the medicine used for. So um, you can actually uh, put it in a question uh, format. And the minimum information uh, required for um, the label. Um, this is also listed in BPOM reg uh, regulation, and it is specifically um, indicated for what type of um, packaging each of this information. And also special precaution, for example, on medical prescription only, harus dengan resep dokter, limited OTC warning signs, box warning, um, in contact with substance derived from porcine and alcohol content. Storage condition must also be indicated on the label. And for the quality documents, um, these are all the um, required quality documents and for each category, of um of a drug including for the each subcategory so in category one there is um there are five um, subcategories and the um, required documents are indicated for each of the subcategory and this is also listed in um in bpom uh, regulation and the next one is the non-clinical documents. Summary of non-clinical studies, contents, 
of the non-clinical study summary and matrix, summary of the non-clinical study matrix. And the clinical documents uh, requirements is also listed for each of the um, category and subcategory of the drug. Um, the next one is variation registration. So changes to drugs that have obtained a marketing authorization can be in the form of changes in administration, efficacy, safety, quality, and or product information and label. The changes are reported through the variation registration mechanism. The category of variations in the WHO guidelines is different from the vari variation registration category as follows. Major variation registration is in accordance with WHO guidelines for major category. Minor variation is in accordance with WHO guidelines for moderate category. Notification variation registration is in accordance with WHO guidelines for minor category. The type of changes and requirements um, have been amended um, in BPOM reg regulation number 15 of 2023, and it's only been issued a few months ago in July of this year. And in the amendment regulation, a grouping of variation is allowed for changes that are related to each other. For example, the addition of new impurity specification followed by the addition of new method of analysis. Changes that are not included in the list of changes of variation registration in the regulation will be evaluated and determined by BPOM through pre-registration process. And a um, list of administrative requirements and also the technical requirements that will be um, submitted depending on the type of the change requested in accordance with the corresponding variation reg registration that's being applied for. Uh, all these technical requirements for each type of variation registration are listed in the BPOM regulation number 15 of 2023. The marketing authorizations, once it's issued, um, it will be valid for a maximum of five years. And um, there's a provision that's been amended by BPOM regulation number 15 of 2019 uh, that states that an approvable letter to prepare the commercial scale drug manufacturer may, may be issued for drugs that have not been manufactured on a commercial scale. So this approvable letter is supposedly issued before a marketing authorization is issued. And just want to touch a little bit on pharmaceutical patents because uh, drug registration is uh, very closely related to patents. Um, so patents is governed under the uh, Director General of Intellectual Property or DGIP in Indonesia, uh, the governing regulations on patents, uh, law number 13 of 2016, and the implement implementing regulations. There is a bowler provision in the Indonesian patent law. It allows the production of pharmaceutical products protected by patent in Indonesia within a period of five years before the end of patent protection. Under the bowler provision, local generic drug may only obtain marketing authorization during the five-year period, but must wait until the patent expires for commercialization of the drug. And just some um, provisions under the Indonesian um, patent law for pharmaceutical patents. Uh, the method of medical treatment examination, except for in, in vitro diagnosis and surgery are not patentable. Second medical use of a pharmaceutical product is also not patentable. So the patent applicants must reformulate the patent claims to overcome the above issues. And then time and frequency of in administration of a drug are not considered as essential claim features. So these are some of the um, patent um, uh, rules and regulations that are spe specific for Indonesia. So um, uh, if anyone is conducting a patent search, you have to really look into the claims that are in the Indonesian um, patent application because they may not be the same as the claims in, in other countries. Okay, and that would conclude my um, presentation for Indonesia. I will hand it over to my colleague, Ms. Hien, to speak about um, Vietnam. Thank you.
Uh, hi everyone, as you can see in my screen, my topic today is marketing authorization and regulatory uh, requirement for exporting drugs to Vietnam. Yeah, my presentation will include uh, four uh, content. The first is the Vietnam pharmaceutical market overlook. And the second content is a regulatory framework for exporting drugs. The third content is drug registration, and the final content is talk about the regulatory reform. Going to the uh, Vietnam pharmaceutical market overlook, I would like to introduce about the national strategies for pharmaceutical uh, industry in Vietnam to, 30, to 2030 with a vision to uh, 2045. The national strategy was approved by the Prime Ministers of Vietnam in the uh, last month. And uh, the strategy laid out some core objectives for the pharmaceutical industry. The first objective is to ensure that Vietnamese people can access to the medicine they need at a reasonable price. And the second objective is to improve the Vietnam research capacity and to produce original brand name products. And next objective is to help Vietnam to become a regional center for drug manufacturing, processing, and development of brand name drugs. And next objective is to develop the Vietnam pharmaceutical regulatory system to an advanced level of performance according to the whole ben benchmarking. And the final objective is to promote the production of medicine raw materials in Vietnam. Yeah, to uh, to to detail the objective, the uh, we uh, find some specific target in the strategy. The first target is to produce at least one hundred original brand name drug, vaccine, and biological products. And the second target is to ensure that the domestic drug will account for. 70% of the market values of the, the drugs in Vietnam. And also uh, another target is to produce 20% of the raw material for domestic drug productions in Vietnam. And also another target is for at least 20% of drug manufacturers in Vietnam need to meet EU GMP, big GMP or equivalent standard. And is one important target is digitalization of all drug information and data of the valid marketing authorization in Vietnam and add all the data to pharmaceutical industry drug bank. For foreign company and organization, it's a note that Vietnam is looking for support from the multinational uh, pharma company uh, in regarding to uh, research and development and technology transfer of drug. And Vietnam also is looking for the support from the foreign organization like a, a pharma group in Vietnam to improve the capacity and effic efficacy of the pharma management authority to aim at that to assist Vietnam in meeting its international commitment as stipulated in some of the size free trade agreements and to harmonize the local database record and procedure to reach an international standards. And now we will go over to the second part of our presentation today, the regulatory framework for exporting drugs. In Vietnam, the drug is under the management of Ministry of Health and uh, in particular, the Drug Administration of Vietnam, it's a brief name, DAV, has uh, the responsibility for pharmaceutical and cosmetics products in Vietnam. Yeah. And uh, in this slide, you can see the, some relevant regulations on drug products in Vietnam. We have a law on pharmacy. We have a degree guiding the law on pharmacy. and he, we also have some circular stipulating some specific issues such as drug registration, drug labeling, 
on drug importation and exportation. Yeah. As you may know, uh, before distributing a, product, a drug in Vietnam, the drug must be registered in the form of a marketing authorization with the DAV for the some special purpose instead of marketing authorization import license may acceptable however the drug manufacturer must satisfy the mp requirement and the foreign drug must be authorized in at least one country before registering in vietnam for some drug requiring specific management uh, in addition to the ma uh, it's uh, required to have an import license for each shipment before importing and circulating the drugs in Vietnam. And now we will go to the, the importer of the drugs in Vietnam. In Vietnam, both local pharma company and foreign invest entity may import drugs into Vietnam. However, to import the drugs, the company are required to have obtain the some relevant license and certificate. And the most important certificate is the certificate of uh, eligibility for pharmaceutical business for conducting the trading uh, business of drugs in Vietnam. And for distributing of drugs in Vietnam, it's not that the FIE means the foreign invested entity are prohibited from distributing drugs in Vietnam. Meanwhile, both local company and FIE may be allowed for wholesaler activity of drugs. To be licensed in the wholesaler of drugs, the local company and the FIE must obtain the uh, relevant certificate for drug trading in wholesaler. And, and um, uh, for local company, the province, the Department of Health will run the certificate for the wholesaler. And for the uh, FIE, the authority will be the DAV. Another matter that the drug price in Vietnam is uh, uh, is, uh, is, uh, is under the responsibility of the DAV is the main policy that the drug manufacturer, exporter, importer, and the distributor are free to set the price of drug. However, the price must be declared with the DAV and any change in the declared price must be redeclared. For imported drug, after obtaining a marketing authorization, but before launching the product in Vietnam market, the importer must declare to the DAV about the estimated wholesale price and the estimated retail price of the drug. And the distributor must not sell the drug at the price higher than the declared price. And in general, the declared price should not be higher than the price of the same drug in the Asian countries where the drugs are imported and circulated. And now we will move on to the drug registration. In Vietnam, drug is defined to include the chemical drug, herbal drug, traditional drug, vaccine, and biologicals. And for chemical drugs, we have two categories. The first is generic drug, which is defined as a finished drug having the same active ingredient contained in the zip form as those of the origin uh, brand name of drug. And the new drug is defined as drug registered for the first time in Vietnam with the new active ingredient or with the new combination uh, combination of the known active ingredient in Vietnam. Then who can be the marketing authorization applicant in Vietnam? They can be the local pharma company and or they can be the foreign pharma company but have a rep office in Vietnam. In general, uh, the marketing authorization valid in three years for drug weak safety and FKCC has to be monitored and for five years for the other drug. 
and in general the drug registration dosage in Vietnam must follow the ASEAN Common Technical Requirement ACTD or the International Conference of Harmonization IC8. Yeah, and similar to the uh, Indonesia, the application dosage will for the new chemical drug for vaccine for biological should include four parts. The part one is administrative data. The part two is quality uh, document. The part three is non-clinical and safety document. And part four is clinical and efficacy document. The fourth generic drug is only need to submit the part one and part two. And you can see here is uh, the process of the drug evaluation in Vietnam. In the first step, the applicant should submit online the application and the, then the DOV in the uh, uh, pre-filing screening review at the, uh, uh, with the one-stop uh, divisions in Vietnam. And then the application will be assigned to the relevant aspect uh, expert and committee and uh, uh, in the reviews by the experts in Vietnam. And then the DAV officer will collect on the review opinion and issue the decision on the uh, drug registration dossier. They can approve the, or they can reject the drug registration or it can require for the further revision or for the supplemented dossier. And in this slide, I summarize the timeline to obtain an MA for the size of uh, drugs in Vietnam. For the new chemical entity, it uh, takes about two or three years to obtain the MA. Meanwhile, for other new medicine, for vaccine and for biological, the timeline may, will be the uh, two years. And for generic drugs, the timeline is certain about 12 or 13 months. And in some very special case, for example, for the red drug, or for example, for the uh, original brand name drug pro uh, produced in Vietnam under a processing and technology transfer agreement, uh, it could be applied uh, the quick or simplified evaluation procedure in Vietnam in the timeline of six months. And uh, I would like to call your attention that from the October uh, 2022, we have a new circular on drug registration. And in this circular, there are some issues uh, that you may concern. So the first issue is about the certificate of pharmaceutical uh, product. For example, uh, uh, now it's only required that the CPP can be include, can include full content according to the WHO CPP template and no uh, require for additional content as previous, such as the pre specification of uh, API, of the name and address of the API manufacturer. And another new point that uh, for the new registration, sorry, for the new chemical drug uh, registration, it's required to submit only one CPP issued by the manufacturing country if the CPP issued authority is MR or the uh, SRA. Yeah, and before, two CPP is required, are required, but now only one. Yeah, we will go to, with the new option, to providing the legal document to uh, uh, to prove that the manufacturer of excipient uh, semi-finished herbal medicine product in uh, regarding the GMP requirement. It means that now DAV is flexible in accepting in accepting the many type of product. Sorry, many type of document to uh, regarding the GMP requirement of the manufacturer. And the, the third uh, issue in the uh, new registration circular that um, regarding for the registration for vaccine serum, for example, is not compulsory to 
uh, to have the, some document uh, issued by the Vietnam National Institute for Controls of Vaccine and Biological. And now, uh, uh, regarding to the DAV checks of the uh, autumn city of the legal document that the DAV only check is the, the document into two scenarios. The first scenario is that before granting the MA, if the DAV notice that the CPP uh, contains some the corrected information, or the legal document relating to the new applicant or manufacturer in Vietnam, the DAV we need to check. And the, in the second scenario, uh, after granting the MA, if the DAV received any information uh, regarding the problem uh, in the manufacturing exporting country regarding the circulation of the foreign product, the DAV we need to check for the uh, authenticity of the information. And now we will go over with the final content about my presentation is regulatory reform. Yeah, uh, as you may know, in this month, the National Assembly in Vietnam just issued a draft to amend and supplement the law of pharmacy. And the DAV is asked for collection to the uh, opinion from the related party. And they set a deadline to contribute op opinion is, uh, is 15 January 2024. Uh, and the, 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 the amended law is expected to be approved in October 2024. Uh, and in the amended laws, there are many contents are amended. Uh, among it, we can, among these, we can uh, list the uh, provision regarding the drug registration, such as the marketing authorization renewal or the re regulatory reliance for the new medicine, or uh, uh, how to recognize DMP compliance assessment done by reference authority. And one of the important uh, content is the digitalization of the drug information and record insert, insert on uh, drug price declaration and, uh, and uh, the pharmaceutical building uh, right of the foreign invested en uh, entities in Vietnam and uh, the a mechanism for the incentives for investment in technology transfer in the pharmaceutical industries in Vietnam. Then among many uh, amendments that yeah, I would like to explain uh, about the MA extension procedure for drugs in Vietnam. It means that if uh, for the five years MA, if there is no serious side effect of the product, yeah, the MA extension may be approved uh, by the DAV without requiring dosier evaluation and uh, advisory from the committee. However, the timeline to submit the extension dosier is within six months from the expiry date of the MA. And another issue that is about the MA variation, it means that in some cases, it's MA variation uh, will be approved by, uh, by the DAV without uh, 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 dossier evaluation and advisory from the committee. Yeah. So the, it means that the MA variation will not regarding the change in indication, dosage, dosage classification of brand name drug, or the change in uh, active ingredient, or change on the manuf manufacturer. 